Hi, welcome to IELTS Dragon. My name is Julius. Today, I'll answer part one practice questions. As a band nine achiever, I'd love to share with you all how I answer different topic questions in part one. In this video, there are 15 topics and 120 topic questions. Enjoy learning from my sample answers. Let's begin. Let's talk about memory. Why do some people have a good memory and others don't? I don't know, but I think that has something to do with age. The younger a person is, the sharper his memory. As people age, they tend to forget things very easily. That is, they can't remember where they keep their car keys or wallet, or some forget their appointment schedule. These are pretty common among old people, but not for young people. I may be wrong, but I really believe that's because of intelligence. Some people who are smart have the best memory. I think their brain is functioning excellently, that they can remember things quickly. However, those who aren't smart usually have difficulty remembering or recalling important things. I know I sound discriminatory, but I base my answer on my personal observation. Why do more people rely on cell phones to remember things? Why not? I believe smartphones make our lives more convenient. That using a reminder application has become the most reliable way to memorize or remember things, especially those people who are simply forgetful. I've been reliant on my smartphone for years to make me remember important dates or events, and I couldn't be happier. I believe that people these days have lost faith in themselves. They don't trust their memory to remember things. They allow themselves to be enslaved by these modern technologies, even in remembering simple things such as anniversaries or birthdays. It's pretty common these days to set an alarm for important dates so they're reminded. Yes, it's too convenient, but because of too convenience, people are losing trust in their memory skills. Are you good at memorizing things? Unfortunately not. Honestly, when I was a student, I didn't perform well in our history class because of my poor memorization skills. As you know, a history subject needs a lot of memorization. Memorizing the important events or dates in the past or the significant people who contributed something valuable in the society. I'm bad at memorizing things because I believe I haven't taken the trouble to improve my memory skills. I'm very proud to say yes, I can easily memorize or remember things. I believe this is because I'm a wide reader. When you're into reading, your memory becomes so active. Reading is a very good exercise for one's brain, and that makes me develop my skills in memorizing and remembering things. Have you ever forgotten something that was important? As I said, I'm forgetful, so more often than not, there have been times that I miss some important events in my life. Well, this question reminds me of the time I forgot my flight schedule, business meeting, and anniversaries. This happens many times in my life because of my carelessness. And the price to pay for being careless is too much. Yes, I have, and I think that's human nature. No one's perfect at remembering important things always. We all fail to remember those important things sometimes, and that's being human. In my experience, the worst thing that I experienced for not remembering something important was last year. I missed my flight going abroad, and it cost me so much. Let's talk about cars. Did you enjoy traveling by car when you were a kid? I loved traveling by car when I was little because it's one of the best ways for me to forget about my homework. I remember my family had a long drive in the countryside every weekend and all I could do was daydream while looking at the beautiful views outside. Remembering those days is bittersweet. Honestly, I don't have any memory of traveling by car when I was a kid, 
because our family didn't own one. Most of the time, our means of transportation back then was a bus or a train. But considering my wonderful experiences now as a big fan of car travels, I think it would have been lovely if I had traveled by car when I was little. What types of cars do you like? Well, I just love sedan cars because they are lighter and easy to manage. To tell you the truth, I'm still so new at driving and I'm still unconfident in reverse parking, so I can't drive other cars except for sedans. Although I tried driving sports utility vehicles, still I find sedan cars easy to maneuver. Without a doubt, sports utility vehicles or SUVs because I'm the type who loves off-road adventures. I have this desire to visit places whose roads are rough or gravelly. For some reason, I just enjoy the bumpy ride on those types of roads and it's more challenging. Do you prefer to be a driver or a passenger? Well, uh, that depends on the situation. If it's a long drive, I just want to be a passenger so I could make the most of my time watching the scenery in front of my very eyes. And if I get tired, I just sleep. Of course, I can't do that if I'm the driver. However, I love being a driver for short distances only. I prefer the former because it's more exciting. I love the feeling of manipulating the wheel, and more importantly, I enjoy having an adrenaline rush when I'm speeding up or overtaking cars. It just gives me an inexplicable satisfaction as a driver. What do you usually do when there is a traffic jam? If I'm the driver, I don't do anything except for waiting for the traffic signal to change. However, if I'm the passenger, I just spend time surfing the net on my smartphone as it's the only way I can kill boredom. Well, I just listen to the music playing and sing along with it. I don't normally get mad at traffic since it's beyond my control. I think I'm a very calm person that I can handle stressful situations well, like those traffic jams. Before we continue, I'd like to congratulate the students who recently passed their IELTS speaking exam after using my reviewers and for attending my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Rhea Torres, Band 7.5 Maria H. Sher Viclar, Band 7 Sheila Ann Vicenio, Band 7 Maya Baby, Band 7.5 Juby Baby, Band 7 Thank you for using my reviewers and for trusting me to be your IELTS speaking coach. Congratulations, we made it! If you're busy and don't have enough time researching for ideas for each cue card, I'd like to offer my reviewer to you. The things that you can see in my reviewer are the possible topic ideas that you can use for each cue card. List of lexical resource, explanations of the intermediate and advanced words that are naturally used, the interactive sample monologues for each topic, and the part 3 practice questions with answers. The interactive sample monologue is designed to be student-centered. It is 90% complete and you need to add your 10% ideas to complete the story. I designed it this way because I don't want you to just read the sample monologues. I want you to take part and interact with the story so you will be trained on how to be creative in delivering your story in part two. That will surely help you express your thoughts confidently and help you achieve your target band scores like my students. If you are interested in my reviewer, just send me an email. I will give you samples. Now. Let's continue our lesson. Let's talk about websites. What kinds of websites do you often visit? Well, I enjoy visiting social media websites since I can keep in touch with my friends or family members who are living many miles away from me. Also, I love to visit news websites such as BBC News and CNN 
as I want to get updated with the latest happenings in the world. Most of the time, I visit a stockbroker's website because I'm into investing. It's the site where I can buy and sell stocks in real time. Aside from that, I spend time visiting new sites that talk about finance or the economy as those sites guide me in my investing or financial decisions. What is your favorite website? Without a doubt, it's YouTube. Uh, that video sharing website is the best in my opinion since I can be informed, entertained, and educated. Actually, I've learned so many things from that site that I hadn't learned in school and it's amazing to watch YouTubers who are exceptional in their field. That makes me so inspired. Honestly, I have a lot of favorite websites, but if I were to choose only one, I think it would be the Business Mirror website. It's a business news site in my country that features daily business news. Like I said earlier, I'm into investing, so reading news from that site helps me understand the economy of our country, which is imperative in my money-making decisions. Are there any changes to the websites you often visit? Yes, as for social media websites, there are changes in privacy settings, such as users can hide the email address that they use or associate with their social media accounts. Also, one can make his account unsearchable from the public. Wow, well, I'm sorry, that's something I've never paid attention to. Most of the time when I visit those websites I'm interested in, I just uh, look at the contents or the articles that those sites provide to their visitors. I don't really care about the settings or the technical aspect of those sites. Perhaps there are changes, but I guess I overlook them. What kinds of websites are popular in your country? I believe the sites of social media because people in our country are so obsessed with using those sites. In fact, our country has been named as one of the countries in the world with the highest number of social media users. Aside from social media sites, news sites are also popular for the obvious reason. People in my country want to be updated with the latest news. I really don't have any idea about what sites are famous in our country However, I can give you my assumption. I assume entertainment websites because uh, they simply provide entertainment to people. I mean, who doesn't want to be entertained in these stressful times? I really believe that we all want to relieve stress, and visiting some entertainment sites can help us feel better. Anyway, that's just my assumption, and I could be wrong. Let's talk about mirrors. Do you like looking at yourself in the mirror? Yes, who doesn't like looking at oneself in a mirror? I think all of us love doing that. Well, I look at myself in a mirror before I leave home because I want to make sure that I look pleasant. Also, I spend time looking at myself in a mirror before I hit the sack because I need to apply some beauty products in my face. Well, I look at myself in the mirror, but I'm not obsessed with myself. I just check my appearance and see if I look good in the clothes that I wear. I think we all do that. We want to know if we are presentable enough before meeting people. Have you ever bought mirrors? I think I haven't. I don't remember a time that I buy one because it's usually my mom who buys things for our house from groceries to furniture. Well, next month, I'll move in to my condominium, so that's the time that I'll buy a mirror by myself. Yes, I've bought different kinds of mirrors. I bought a car blind spot mirror for my car, a freestanding full-length mirror in my room, and a compact mirror. 
Actually, the most expensive mirror that I bought is the one that I use in my room. It costs me $100. Do you usually take a mirror with you? Not at all, because I don't have the need to do so. If I'm not at home and I need to check how I look, I just need to go to the bathroom in our office. But honestly, I'm not vain that I have to check my appearance from time to time. No, I don't, because there are so many mirrors that we can use in public spaces if we want to check our appearance. There are so many toilets with huge mirrors that we can use from time to time. But if I'm in a place where I can't access those uh, public spaces, I just use the camera of my phone to check my face, and it's pretty convenient. <laughs> Would you use mirrors to decorate your room? Well, I've never thought about that, but I think it'll be interesting if I decorate my room with mirrors. I guess my room will look more spacious and elegant if I install mirrors in the corners or some parts of my room. I think I'll give it a shot. Well, I've already decorated my room with mirrors and I couldn't be happier. My room looks more spacious and elegant. But what I like about having mirrors in my room is that I can always see myself. Those mirrors remind me to be conscious about my weight. I would also love to give a shout out to my successful viewers. Marys Sanchez, Band 8.5 Kusan Abdomominov, Band 8 Megan Bermudo, Band 7 Krishame Rapista, Band 7 Thank you all for watching my videos. I'm so happy that my videos helped you achieve your target band score. And to you all who are watching this video, I'm looking forward to mentioning your name in my next video. If they made it, there's no reason why you can't make it. I wish you all the best. You can do it. Let's talk about dreams. Can you remember the dreams you had? Well, not all of my dreams. I can remember those dreams of mine that frightened me, entertained me, or surprised me since those have an impact on my waking life. However, there are those dreams of mine that I can't really remember despite forcing myself to recall those dreams. Yes and no. Yes, I can remember my recent dreams, especially last night. I dreamt that I'd become a superhero fighting aliens that conquered the planet Earth. That was really entertaining that when I woke up, I just laughed at myself. And no, because there are dreams of mine that are vague, that no matter how hard I try remembering them, I just can't remember at all. Do you share your dreams with others? Never. For me, dreams are really personal and they should never be shared with anyone else. I can't recall that I share my dreams with someone even with my family. Besides, dreams don't have any special meaning. They're just the result of one's exhaustion from work or study. Yes, I do. I enjoy sharing my dreams with my friends or family, especially if my dreams are hilarious. I love to see my friends and family laugh with me while I narrate what I dream about. But there are those dreams that I can't easily share with them because I feel embarrassed. Do you think dreams have special meanings? I really don't think so. Like I said earlier, dreams are just the result of one's tiredness or one's overthinking about so many things. In my opinion, there isn't any special meaning behind every dream. But in spite of my belief, I do respect those fortune tellers or those people whose job is to interpret someone's dream. I believe so because dreams are a kind of signal or warning or an answer to the question that troubles the mind of the dreamer in his waking life. I've had so many experiences that my dream helps me make a decision in life. But I can't also deny the fact that sometimes Dreams can be meaningless. Do you want to make your dreams come true? 
Well, I don't really mind, except for those dreams of mine that are terribly frightening. I don't think I will enjoy living my life if my bad dreams such as the apocalypse or zombie invasion will become a reality. Yes, for positive dreams such as winning a lottery, living in a big house, finding the love of my life, or having financial freedom. But when it comes to those dreams which I consider bad luck, God forbid. No one in this world wants to make their bad dreams a reality. Let's talk about the cinemas. Did you usually go to the cinema when you were a kid? Unfortunately not, because I didn't have the privilege to visit cinemas. As I was a country boy back then, all my childhood days were spent at a farm with my parents and friends. I started going to the cinema when I was already a teen. Yes, definitely. I had wonderful memories of watching movies on the big screen with my parents. At least twice a month, my parents took me to the city to enjoy watching cartoons at the cinema. Those days were really memorable and I'm so grateful to my parents for spending time taking me to the cinema. Do you usually go to the cinema with your friends? Well, only sometimes because I'm busy and they're all busy as well. Our schedule doesn't match most of the time, so whenever we decide to watch a movie, we have to plan in advance. Besides, the movie genre that I enjoy watching is different from theirs. Not at all. I love watching a movie on the big screen on my own as I can concentrate on watching. But if my friends invite me or treat me, I will never refuse. I'll be glad to come with them and have an awesome time watching the movie. I think I sound so selfish now. <laughs> Do you still enjoy watching the movies you loved as a child? Yes, I still love watching them so much. I won't be embarrassed to say that from time to time, I watch Disney movies like Aladdin, Peter Pan, and more. Whenever I watch those movies again, I feel like a child and that's pretty lovely as I temporarily forget my work-related or personal problems. Not anymore, as my interest now is completely different. I'm more into watching documentaries, historical movies, and romantic comedy films. But sometimes I have the chance to watch those movies that I enjoyed when I was a kid when my nieces and nephews visit us at home. More often than not, they watch classic Disney movies like Snow White or Cinderella. And those movies remind me of my childhood days. Do you prefer watching movies at home? Or at the cinema? Well, I don't really mind. I can enjoy watching movies on the big screen or at home. Although there is a big difference between the two, still I can complain as long as I'm entertained and I'm happy with a movie. Both ways are really fine for me. Of course, I prefer the latter, but doing that all the time is incredibly costly and tiring. Unlike watching movies at home where you don't need to spend money for a movie ticket and you don't have to go out. Besides, it's unlimited to watch movies at home. There's so much convenience watching movies at home, but then again, the entertainment value when we watch movies at the cinema is incomparable. Let's talk about time management. How do you plan your day? It's such a shame to admit this, but I'm terrible at planning or organizing my day. If I plan my day ahead, I just end up not following what I plan. And because of that, I've made up my mind not to plan things. I just want my day to be spontaneous as I can be more productive, in my opinion. Well, I always make a to-do list for the next day before I hit the hay, since I have a tendency to miss doing some important things on the day they're supposed to be completed. By writing those things on a notepad on my smartphone, I'm guided on the things that I need to fulfill for the day, and honestly, that practice helps me improve my productivity. Is it easy for you to manage time? That really depends on my mood. 
If I'm so inspired, managing my time is not a worry. I can easily manage my time without any pressure or stress. That is, I can do the things that I need to do seamlessly. But if I feel the opposite, I become a time waster. Yes, I'm very good at it, and that's because I was trained by my mom not to waste my time. She's actually a disciplinarian that she didn't want me to spend so much time doing trivial things such as socializing on social media or playing computer games. I was scared of my mom back then that I never disobeyed her. And you know what? I'm thankful that she was like that to me as I learned how to value my time. When do you find it hard to allocate time? Obviously, when I'm incredibly busy with my work or my personal life, that's when I have trouble giving my time to others or to another task. It's just impossible for me to squeeze someone or something in, and sadly, I sometimes feel guilty about it. Well, let me think. Oh, I believe when I'm doing something very important that needs to be completed sooner. That's the only time that I can ever spare some of my time to someone or something because obviously I need to concentrate on what I need to do. I believe anyone in that situation can never entertain people or another task. Do you like being busy? Not at all, and I don't think there's someone in this world who wants to be busy. Busyness is a killer. It halts you from doing your hobbies, seeing your friends, spending time with your grandparents or parents, and more importantly, living a healthy life. Yes, I do, but not all the time. I like being busy with work because it simply shows that I'm contributing something valuable to the company. However, if business is out of hand and it affects my mental health, I abhor it. Let's talk about mobile phones. What was your first mobile phone? I had a K-pad phone uh, from LG, which I personally bought when I was a high school student. It was a small and basic phone with radio as the only entertainment. I remember I bought it for only $60. My first phone ever was already a smartphone. It was an iPhone 4S, which was given by my sister. She gave it to me because she upgraded her phone to iPhone 5S. I was so happy at that time because I was the only one who didn't own a phone in our class. I was 14 years old at that time. Do you often use your mobile phone for texting or calls? I often use my phone for video calling. I have a Viber application installed on my phone, which I can use for contacting my family and friends. But if I don't have mobile data or internet connection, I simply call them as I subscribe to a postpaid plan where I can call and text without restrictions. Well, I seldom call my friends or family unless it's an emergency because it's costly. More often than not, I use my phone for text messaging because it's affordable. And since we have access to a Wi-Fi connection at work, I use my smartphone for video calling as well. But of course, I only do that during lunch break. Will you buy a new phone in the future? Absolutely. The phone that I've been using is already outdated. When I surf the net, web pages don't load quickly. Besides, the resolution of the camera is pretty low. I think I'll buy a new smartphone next month. Well, I don't have any plan of buying a new phone anytime sooner because I've just bought the latest model of iPhone and I'm pretty satisfied with this new phone of mine. It actually cost me an arm and a leg, but I couldn't be happier owning the latest model of iPhone. How has your mobile phone changed your life? My smartphone has greatly improved my life in a way that I can do online banking at my fingertips. 
interact with my friends or family members who are living abroad in real time. Search directions with the use of Google Map, widen my knowledge through reading education sites, and more. Well, my mobile phone is a tiny thing, yet one of the most useful things I possess. Wow, that's interesting. My phone has revolutionized the way I live my life. My phone is my alarm clock, my teacher when I need to learn how to cook a new recipe, my guide when I'm not familiar with a place, my radio when I want to relax, my entertainer when I get bored, and more. Thanks to the development of a smartphone technology as I get to enjoy the conveniences in life. Let's talk about TV program. What kinds of TV programs do you often watch? I enjoy watching sports programs because obviously I'm into sports. Most of the time when I'm at home and if I have so much free time, I'm a couch potato enjoying my time cheering on my favorite soccer team or basketball team. Actually, I rarely watch TV, so I can't say that I have a particular TV program that I often spend time watching. But if I get a chance to watch TV, I only watch game shows as I find them entertaining. Do you think kids are watching too much television? Yes, based on my observation, children nowadays are addicted to watching TV. They watch their favorite TV programs for hours and that's saddening because they become physically inactive. As a result, some of them become obese or worse, some of them acquire serious illnesses due to being unhealthy. I don't think so because as I've noticed, a lot of children these days are hooked on playing computer or mobile games. Or some of them are into watching YouTube videos for hours and hours. I bet some of them don't really care about watching TV. What are the impacts of watching TV programs on children? Well, as I said earlier, children become unhealthy for spending so much time watching TV. Aside from that, when children are not given parental guidance when they watch some TV programs, they have a tendency to imitate what they see on a TV like violence or derogative remarks, and that's pretty bad. If children watch those child-friendly or educational programs, they will surely learn so much. For instance, they can learn math, science, English, and more. However, if children are watching some programs that are not intended for them, I believe they may copy some expletives or their innocence will be jeopardized by some TV scenes that are not for minors. What kinds of TV programs do you think should be broadcast more? If I had a power to choose which programs that are worthy to broadcast, I think I would choose those programs that improve the morale of the youth. This is because a lot of young people these days are not valuing moral values. When I see some young people on social media, I really get disappointed in how irresponsible they are and how they lack self-respect. I think it would be nice if educational programs or those programs that bring awareness to people about social issues should be given more airtime. If that's the case, I think a lot of people will become knowledgeable and socially aware of the many issues that their country is having. But I know that's not possible as those programs won't get the highest turnover. Let's talk about daily routine. What is your daily routine? It's nothing special. I believe my routine is similar to what a lot of people are doing every single day. Like, I get up at 6 a.m., take a shower right away, then prepare my breakfast and head to the office at 7.30 in the morning. After work, I immediately go back home and cook dinner. After that, I read or watch a movie until 10 in the evening and hit the sack after. Well, I get up at 8 in the morning and that's actually late for some people. 
Right after that, I take a shower and eat my breakfast. I'm lucky enough because my mom prepares my breakfast. Then I start working. I don't need to commute since I'm working from home. In the afternoon, I take a nap at 2, then I go back to work till 6 in the evening. I have dinner at around 7 p.m. and have my personal time until I hit the hay at 10. Have you ever changed your routine? Since I started working, I haven't changed my daily routine yet. I've been religiously following this routine for 10 years now, and I can't complain. Perhaps if I change my job, I may do some adjustments, but for now, I'm happy with my work and my routine. Yes, I used to get up quite early last year because I was working in the office then, but because of the pandemic, our company asked us to work from home. And you know what? I realized that working from home is the best. It's pretty convenient and I can save so much money. I just hope that this won't change. Do you think it is important for students to have a daily routine? Personally, yes especially in this generation where there are so many distractions. Students are easily tempted to spend so much time playing computer games or interacting on social media instead of doing their schoolwork. Having a routine helps them become productive. Yes, I believe so because through following a routine, students will understand the importance of finishing a task and not wasting their precious time on things that can't help them develop skills or improve their character. When a student has a routine, he will be trained to become an organized person. What part of your day do you like the best? I love mornings because they remind me of a brand new day. A new day to live life meaningfully, a new day to try again after failing, a new day to seize an opportunity, uh, a new day to improve myself, a new day to be grateful. Mornings are the best. The evening is the very best for me. It's the best time that I can relax after working like a dog. That is, I can watch my favorite drama series, sip some wine, and more importantly, sleep. I think a lot of people can surely agree with me. Let's talk about street markets. Are there many street markets in your country? Yes, there are numerous street markets all over my country, and that's simply because they're part of our culture. Street markets have a long history in my beloved country. They've been existing even before World War I. Uh, these days, you can always see a street market wherever you go in this country. Yes, undeniably, you can always see many kinds of street markets, most especially in big cities and some towns where there is a huge population. Well, I just visited one last week and I bought some handmade accessories and homemade bread. I actually had so much fun visiting that street market with my friends. What do people usually buy at a street market? More often than not, people buy homemade products like bread, cookies, jam, and the like. They also buy some handicrafts, clothes, and inexpensive electronic devices. In my opinion, buying those stuff from street markets is good because customers are helping small businesses to flourish. Honestly, I'm not sure since I rarely go to a street market. I haven't had many opportunities to see what people buy at a street markets. I assume they buy cheap food, clothes, or some secondhand items. But again, I'm not sure and I could be wrong. Do you prefer to go shopping in the shopping mall or on the street market? I can't really choose between the two because I love shopping in those places. Well, what I like about the shopping mall is that it has a wide variety of choices. I can buy anything I want and it's pretty convenient. Shopping at a street market is incredibly fun because I get to discover some valuable things that are cheaper. Besides, I enjoy haggling with salesmen, which I can't do in the shopping mall. 
Well, obviously, I prefer shopping in a shopping mall simply because almost everything I need is there. Besides, I feel safe inside a mall since there are CCTVs. In case I lost my valuables, I can easily ask for help through the management of that shopping mall. That's something I can't do at the street markets. When was the last time you went to a street market? Uh, just yesterday. I was so stressed out thinking of this IELTS exam that I needed to divert my attention. I went to the nearest street market in our town and bought some snacks, which I've brought with me today. I guess after this exam, I'll drop a buy at some street markets in this city before I leave home. It's been a while, I guess, two years ago. That's when I traveled to Vietnam. I went to one of the street markets in the capital with my friends. We bought some souvenirs and ate some of their street foods. It was actually a memorable experience. Let's talk about sports. Do you like watching sports programs on TV? Definitely. I love watching basketball and soccer on TV with my dad. My dad and I have established a very good relationship because of our interest in sports. And that's something I'm so happy about. Yes, I do. However, I prefer watching sports live because it's more fun. I can cheer my favorite team on. I can interact with other sports fans. And the lively energy of the crowd is so infectious. The feeling of watching sports live is really inexplicable. Do you like to watch live sports games? Yes, who doesn't like to? Although I'm happy to watch sports programs on TV, watching sports live is truly incomparable. The last time I watched soccer live was three years ago. I was cheering on my favorite soccer team, and that was the last sports event I went to since the news about the pandemic broke. Of course, as I said earlier, I prefer watching sports live than watching them on TV. Actually, I'm very happy these days since little by little, life is getting back to normal. We can now go to a sports event without worrying too much about the coronavirus. It's a big relief. Who do you like to watch sports games with? Well, no one else but my dad. When dad and I watch sports either on TV or in a sports stadium, we're just too noisy. We easily get carried away. <laughs> by our emotions, and we just love it. I love watching sports with my closest friends because we both share an interest in sports. I would love to do it with my family, but I'm the only one at home who's really into sports. They can't vibe with me, so normally when I attend a sports event, I'll always go out with my buddies. What kinds of games do you expect to watch in the future? Well, I'll still be watching basketball and soccer. These are my favorites because they are too exciting to watch. Anyway, lately I've been starting to watch tennis and I find it interesting as well. So I guess I'll watch it more often in the future. I'm actually a big fan of baseball, soccer, and basketball, so for sure I'll expect to watch more matches of these sports in the future. Recently, I've developed an interest in boxing, so I believe I'll watch more boxing matches in the future. Watching boxing has a different kind of effect on me, and I love it. Let's talk about art. Do you like drawing? Yes, I do. I love drawing as it's my way of expressing my emotions, most especially my negative emotions. When I feel depressed, drawing is my comfort. Through drawing, I get to release my frustration and it helps me keep going in life. Well, drawing is not my cup of tea simply because I don't know how to draw. I haven't developed a skill in drawing. What I can draw is only a stick figure. I'm like a child who has just started to learn drawing. Do you like to go to the gallery? Yes, definitely. I'm into visiting galleries because I just love art. I'm fond of looking at those paintings or sculptures made by artists. For some reason, when I visit a gallery, I feel so calm 
and I forget all my worries in life. Well, it's fine with me to go to an art gallery if someone invites me, but deciding on my own to visit a gallery hasn't happened yet. I guess I'm not just a fan of galleries, and I think I haven't developed an interest in art exhibitions. Do you want to learn more about art? I love art, but I haven't considered learning more about it. Yes, I'm good at drawing, but it's just my hobby. I don't want to learn more about drawing, as I'm also pretty busy with my current work. I just don't have some extra time to learn about art. No, I haven't thought about that. I believe I have no spare time to learn different forms of art. But even if I have time, I still don't want to spend it learning about art, as I'm not interested in it. I'd rather develop business skills as that's way more important in life, in my opinion. Did you learn drawing when you were a kid? Yes, of course. I remember our kindergarten teacher taught us how to draw a stick figure. And when I was a first year high school student, our art teacher taught us how to sketch like a professional. And that's when I developed my artistry. Yes, I did. I think every child learns how to draw in school since teachers spend time teaching them how to draw in their art class. Unfortunately, I just don't have the talent for drawing. No matter how hard I tried learning back then, I just couldn't improve. Let's talk about photography. Do you like taking photos? Yes, I do. I enjoy taking photos of nature, such as animals, landscapes, beaches, and the like. In fact, I can't travel without taking with me my mirrorless camera. My camera is my companion whenever I travel somewhere, as it helps me document my trip through photos. Of course, who doesn't love to? I think every one of us enjoys capturing moments from time to time with our camera. Well, uh, most especially these days that we all have smartphones. Our smartphones can take photos very instantly whenever and wherever we are. In fact, I have numerous photos of my travels stored on my smartphone. Do you like taking selfies? No way. I find it awkward taking selfies, especially in public. I feel like I'm so vain if I do it in public spaces. So, if I want to take photos of myself with beautiful scenery as the background, I always ask someone to take a picture of me. Yes, I do, and I think that's pretty normal these days. In the past, I was awkward or I felt so embarrassed when I took a picture of myself with my smartphone because I felt like people are looking at me. But I realized later on that people don't really care, so that's when I started to gain confidence in taking selfies. What is your favorite family photo? Unfortunately, I don't have one. I don't have a family photo since I'm living away from my family. Also, I can't recall if we have a family photo at home. As far as I can remember, we don't have one. I don't see one in the photo albums that we have at home. I think my parents didn't care about taking photographs back then. Oh, let me recall our family photos. Um, I, I believe the photo of our Disneyland trip that was memorable since it was our first family trip abroad. Our family picture was taken in front of one of the castles in Disneyland with Princess Belle standing next to me. Do you want to improve your photography skills? Yes, I really want to because my photos aren't the best yet. I still have so much to learn about portrait photography and architectural photography. I know it'll take time, but I'm patient enough to develop my photography skills. Yes, absolutely. My way of taking pictures is extremely basic. I want to learn some techniques on how to take photos like a pro. Actually, there are various online courses about photography that I'm already eyeing. It's just that time doesn't permit since I've been so busy with my work. Let's talk about emails. Do you often send emails? Yes, as a nurse, I need to send emails to our doctors and patients from time to time. 
But most of the time, my emails are sent to my patients asking for some personal data or giving some healthcare information. I like this mode of communication because it's pretty convenient. Not that often since our means of communication at work is Slack. I can only use emails when I need to send confidential documents that need to be encrypted. Actually, I send emails to our clients at least uh, twice or thrice a month. When would you send emails to others? Like I said earlier, as a nurse, I need to send emails to our patients whenever I need to collect some personal data and when I need to provide some pieces of healthcare information that are beneficial to my patient's condition. Uh, aside from that, I sometimes send emails to my friends and relatives when I invite them to social gatherings like birthday parties. Well, at work, I send emails to our clients when I need to send quotations, payment requests, and contracts. Like I said earlier, I do that at least two or three times a month. Anyway, I sometimes send my travel videos to my friends and family via email since I can't send them through messaging applications because of the file size limit. Is sending emails popular in your country? I believe so because it's pretty convenient. All businesses use this mode of communication to complete business transactions with their clients online. That itself is an indication that the use of emails is incredibly prominent. Well, not just in this country, but all over the world. I'm not really sure about this because these days there are so many messaging applications that, that people can use to interact with their friends, family, or business counterparts. Well, of course, in the early 2000s, emails were undeniably popular among the people in this country. However, I doubt if the use of emails is still popular these days. Do you think sending emails will be more popular or less popular in the future? I reckon the use of emails will be unpopular in the years to come because for sure there will be new inventions. You know, technology keeps on evolving and that's inevitable. Many years ago, we never expected that emails would come into existence. So I believe there will be a new way to communicate with people that's way better than emails. I don't think it'll become less popular in the future because emails are just pretty convenient. However, I think emails will be upgraded. I mean, the functions or features will be updated and become more secure. I'm pretty sure email provider companies will keep on improving their email services to make sure their users will be satisfied. If you're interested in my reviewers, just send me an email. I will send you samples and see for yourself if you need a full version. Be one of those successful test takers who used my reviewers. I'll be waiting for your email. Anyway, if you find value in this video, just give me a like or subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting videos related to IELTS speaking. Also, don't forget to watch uh, the videos that appear on your screen right now because they can definitely help you. Till next time, have a lovely day. Bye.